Stephanie Webster right here on KROBFM.com. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Air Minute Counts. I'm Daphne. I'm Stephanie. I'm Pete. And I'm Repeat. And we're Love, Love Squared. Square. And every time we come to you all, there's two things we want you to know. And the first thing is that you're so loved by God. There's nothing that you can absolutely absolutely do that can take God's love away from you. Every day, God get up knocking on your heart, wanting for you to come back home and help design a relationship with you. So no, where, no matter where you might find yourself at today, just know that God wants and design a relationship with you and welcoming you back home with arms a wide stretch saying, come back home because he desires and wants a relationship with you and that you're so loved by him. And the next thing we want you to uh, do, always remember that you're here for a limited amount of time in the earth and you were created with a specific purpose in the earth. So we want to make sure that we're making every minute count because, again, we're only here for a limited amount of time and we want to serve the purpose in which we were sent to do. So it's important that we're living every minute in, in that particular purpose and serving God in that particular purpose that God has sent us to live in the earth. So you, like Steph said, we matter and God loves us and we can only do that particular purpose in the earth by seeking him and seeking and asking him what that specific purpose is. So make sure that we're maximizing every minute and making it count for the purpose in which we were sent because uh, again, that purpose is needed in the earth. So make sure that you're doing what it is that you were purposed to do in the earth. Amen. Amen. And today we want to ask you a question. Uh, uh, and the question is, how have you been living your life? Have you been living your life by faith or by sight? Because that makes a difference. And, and a lot of times we get discouraged because what we live our, uh, our life by our sight by rather than by walking by faith. And we're here to encourage you today that uh, God wants us to understand that when we can walk by faith, it's nothing that can stop us. And we'll be able to do all things through Christ who strengthened us when we're able to walk our life by faith rather than by sight. So on today, we'll ask you again, how have you been living your life? Has it been by sight or by faith? Because it matters. And when we can walk again by faith, we can do all things through Christ who strengthened us. So again, how have you been living? Yeah, and if the way uh, you if you want to see God's purpose in your life, you got to live by faith. And Second Corinthians five and seven say we walk by faith and not by sight. And another translation say we live by believing and not by seeing. And most of the time we came up and put it said in our mind. We have to see it in order to believe it, but that's not faith. Faith is saying you got to believe it in order to see it. And so the first thing is faith has to be a decision. You got to make up in your mind that I'm going to have faith in God, that I'm going to trust. Well, you got to have make sure you make who you got the faith in. You, and we want you to put the faith in God this morning. And by faith, you can trust God. And But it got to be a decision that you make. You got to have a settled mind that I'm going to follow God no matter what the situation might show up, no matter what's showing up in my life, no matter what I might be saying, no matter how bad these children are being, no matter how bad this job is, this marriage should falling apart, whatever your uh, situation might be this morning. I don't know what it is, but God is telling you by faith you can get through it if you just put your faith in him, not in the situation, not in the circumstances that you are in, but if you can just learn to put your faith in him, that means absolute trust in him. No matter what's going on in your life, you got to settle and made up mind, Lord, that I've got faith in you, that I'm going to trust you, Lord God, that I'm going to abide with you, Lord God, that I'm going to seek you, Lord God, and I'm going to Stay with you, Lord God, because my faith is in you, Lord God, and in your word. It is saying when you can't even trace God, you got to learn how to still trust God. And like she said, it's hard to uh, have faith in something that, that you don't trust. And we don't normally trust God because we haven't been working on that relationship with God and building that relationship with him that we can trust him and put all our faith in God. And that's how it's going to take us to be able to place our faith in God by building that relationship and spending some time with God so that we can understand the character of God so that when those particular things do show up, that it don't take our faith away. It will it'll strengthen our faith to be able to trust God and put our, keep our faith anchored in God and not lead to our own understanding called Proverbs what 3 and 5 through 6 say trust in the Lord with all your heart and not lead to your own understanding and when we can do that he'll direct our path but a lot of time we don't trust God we still trying to trust God a little 
little bit and then we trust in ourselves a little bit and that's not going to work because we got two uh, heads trying to operate at that particular time and that's going to hurt, hurt, hurt our faith rather than help our faith and we're going to continue to have faith in ourselves rather than have faith in God, the only one that can do what needs to be done when we find ourselves in that particular situation. So it's uh, crucial that we're spending time uh, with God and hearing God and we're spending time in God's word through prayer and reading and just uh, being with other people that believe in God that can share their testimony so that it can strengthen our faith so that when things do show up that we're prepared and that we have a, the right foundation and that our faith can be secured in God but if we haven't been doing the preparation in the time of spending with God it's going to be hard for us to keep our faith there rather than uh, uh, walk by faith rather than by sight because we're going to go back to lean into our own understanding and try to see things through a human perspective and we're going to fail every time so it's important again that we understand that if uh, we can't uh, have faith in God if we don't trust God so it goes back to building that relationship so we can be in a posture in a position to trust God no matter what shows up or what comes our way our faith is anchored in the one that can keep us and secure us in whatever it is that we may be going through and yeah, and when you do have faith, you can't, you can just can't have faith for just a short period of time. You got to have long sighted faith, but your faith has to be long sighted and not short sighted. And because most of the time, when we don't see something right away, we thinking God done forgot about us and that God done left us, but that's not true. You got to learn how to continue to have faith in God, even when you don't see the uh, big picture, when you just got a little piece of the puzzle. The thing is, you got to understand that God has the big picture, that God knows the big, uh, the, uh, the beginning from the end that he already knows everything that's going to happen that's why you got to continue to stay with God and just trust God even when your situation is like man I've been in this situation so long God and don't look like nothing to even happen I'm doing everything you tell me to do and doesn't look like anything is changing I was reading this article and it was talking about a Chinese bamboo tree and how it take how much it take for that Chinese bamboo tree to grow it's that first it start off as a seed and then you put that seed Seed in the ground, and you have to water and uh, and fertilize that seed for five years before you see any uh, anything before it uh, come up above the ground. And they say if you miss any day within that five years, that that tree die. And just think about that and how <laughs> persistent you have to be in your faith. And that's what God is telling you. You got to be persistent in your faith. You can't have a quit, a give up and quit spirit. You got to keep on watering that thing and keep on fertilizing that thing and keep on believing in God and having faith in God. Even when you don't see God moving on your behalf, even when you don't look like that, nothing is happening. Because up under the surface, it says it's when it's spreading its roots and it's getting its root and getting its struck and getting its and been, uh, been able to uh, hope withhold and get a structure with the roots because it's what you're rooted in that's going to help you to stay in. So that with that with that tree takes time and said with the, after that five year within six weeks that tree uh, sprouts up to nine feet tall. So guess what? God is going to bring come through for you. He's going to bless you, but you got to continue to have faith in God even when you don't see it happening, even when it don't look like nothing happened. Just trust that it is happening. Something is changing. And but most of all, the change start with us is change with our attitude and what God want to fix something within us and build our character and build our faith in him and our trust in him. So it's always start with us and more so than the external stuff. So he want to fix us first. And yeah, like you were saying, Jeremiah 29 and 11 came to mind. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, pro prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. And the thing is, to say God knows the plan. And a lot of times, we think we have to know the plan in order to make the steps and have the faith that is required to be able to do what God is asking us. And like Steph said, God don't always give us the big picture because God understands sometimes we can't uh, handle the big picture. And that's why he... He is a faithful and a graceful and merciful God. He's able to give us those particular things and steps and increments that we can handle. So we have to understand the one that and trust the one that knows the plan. And because God knows the plan, he knows exactly how we need to be, what we need to be doing, what time we need to be doing, and, and to the maximum of how we need to be doing that particular thing. But the thing is, we got to trust however or how much God gives us or reveal to us at that particular time and know that's exactly what we need. And be 
being willing to take the steps and be obedient and follow his instructions and in whatever it is that he's telling us to do. Because again, faith is like Steph said, believing in God, even when we can't see what, what it is that he's telling us to do. What was Martin Luther King uh, quote Steph and said, you trust in the step even when you can't see the staircase. And that's what God wants us to do, be able to trust his steps even when we can't see or understand. God don't require our understanding. He just requires obedience and be willing to faithfully obey whatever it is that he's telling us to do. And a lot of times we want to understand and have the big picture before we can make a, make a move. But that's not faith. That's uh, trying to, again, go back to our natural, wanting to see it before we get before we move and, uh, and do what it is that God is calling us to do. But being a Christian, you can't operate like that. We got to, again, believe and have faith first, and then God will be willing to show us when we take the faith. Go back to Abraham. Uh, God only provided the ram when Abraham moved out in faith. And a lot of times we like to see the ram first before we're able to move and do what God is asking us to do. But God only provides the ram when you we are exercised and moved out in faith so your ram is there when you activate your faith god will produce the ram but not until then yeah after you have uh made the decision that you're going to follow god in faith and then you got to fix your focus because hebrews 2 12 and 2 said let us fix our eyes on jesus the author and finisher of our faith so when you uh, make the decision that you're going to follow jesus and uh, uh, have faith in jesus and then you got to have your focus on jesus because guess what the external situation and issue is going to come to try to distract you and then and discourage you and take you off of course and keep you from focusing on god and make you look at the situation because whatever you uh put your eyes on and whatever you focus on that's what's going to be magnified so when the situation shows up you got to learn how to recalibrate yourself and refocus and bring your focus back to god because it's going to always come and try to steal your attention but you got to continue to pay attention to what god's word has told you and lean on god's word even when you can't see god you got to remember his word and what his word and lift up his word and hold up his word because his word is going to be the light unto your lamp unto your feet and would help you get to your next step but if you're not focusing on god you keep on focusing on the situation and when you're going to get out the situation you're going to miss what god is trying to teach you and what you're trying to learn in the situation so when you learn how to just fix your eyes on god even no matter what's going on you'll be able to have the peace that you need the inner peace the inner joy that you are uh, even when you're going to going through you can still be content in whatever situation you find yourself in why because your eyes is fixed are fixed on god it's almost like peter walking on the water as long as peter's kept his eyes on god he was able to walk on the situation with, with the, what he was facing but as soon as the wind came he's and he distracted peter what did he do he started a situation so if you're finding yourself situation today we're telling you to get your eyes back on the right place put your eyes back on god because when you're able to put your eyes on god he might not take you out of the situation but he will give you the grace that's sufficient for the situation and help you supply you for the situation because long as you have god's presence in your life he will help you in and everything so the thing most important thing is is god's presence and that you're focusing on god's presence because in god's presence we have everything that we need so learn how to just first have faith and that's a decision and then focus you got to fix your eyes on god no matter whatever comes even when you have to refocus do that yeah like steph said we're gonna have to refocus because every day in life you're gonna get probably get out of alignment because things gonna come to try to distract you discourage you and uh make you have doubt in what god done told you but the thing is faith come by what hearing and hearing the word of god so we got to make sure what what we're listening to is it lining up with god because we want to be again uh, faith comes by hearing the word and if we're not hearing god's word we, that's, that's already uh uh messing up our faith or uh, distracting our faith or causing something to hinder our faith in God. So we have to be careful and mindful and watch for uh, those particular gates, what we see and what we're hearing and what we're speaking. We have to make sure all those particular things are lining up with God because if not, they can hurt our faith and cause us to change our focus off God and put our focus on the circumstance rather than God. And it'll cause us to revert back to seeing with our natural eyes rather than walking by faith, whatever the situation may be going on. So 
it's crucial that we got to guard at those particular things and we're watching what we're hearing, seeing, and speaking and making sure that it again lines up with what God say. And if it doesn't uh, line up with God say, say, we have a choice at that um, a moment. Do we reject it or do we receive it? And when we reject it, again, uh, we'll have the power again to continue to walk in faith rather than in, in sight. So it's that's our job to be able to do those particular things. And like she said, once we have that focus, we got to have that follow. Because we can't just be hearers of God's word. We got to become doers of God's word. We have to activate God's word in our lives. And that's what faith helps us to do, activate God's word in our lives. Because we understand that God's word won't return unto him void, that it will accomplish everything that God sends us out to do. So we don't know where you may be at today, but we just want you to say, by faith, you can get through anything that you may be facing on today. And God going to give you the strength when we can, again, focus on him and remind ourselves of God's word and allow God's word to do the work on our behalf. We can just rest on in him rather than, again, try to visualize and try to figure everything out. God wants us to, again, rest in him and exercise his word because it's his word that's going to bring us the victory when we can, again, lean on his word and not our own understanding. He will guide our path to where it is that we need to be. Yeah, so today we are telling you by faith, if you can focus on God and then you have to follow through with what God has told you, you got to stand on his word. He said you got to go through in order to get through. You just can't stop in the middle because most of the time we get in the middle, that's where we want to stop and we want to give up in the middle of the process. But God is telling us today, don't give up in the middle of the process. He got an expected end for each and every one of us, but we got to do learn how to lean on God by faith and not let our eyes take us away from what God has told us and not us get us discouraged and not believe what God has told uh, has told us because he, if he made you a promise, guess what? God is not man that he should lie to us. If he promised you something, he's going to bring it to, bring it through because God is not concerned with time. That's what we do. We get caught up in, in the time like, man, it's taking so long. I done been caught up in this for so long. I don't think it's going to ever change, but we don't want you to have that attitude today. We want you to have a, a faith that won't quit, that won't give up even when it seems like it's taking long. It's something trying to get the other get something fixed within like i said it about that root take a root within you so you can when uh any, anything come you'll be able to stand within uh, uh, withstand the storms in your life because god is trying to build you up so you will be able to be prepared for whatever uh, the promise that he's trying to get to you so it's not that god don't want you to have something uh, have it he, is he working so that you can have it so don't give up in the middle keep fighting and keep going because god got an expected end for all of us but we got to have faith in god that he can and that he will do exactly what he say he would do he gonna do it but can we trust and believe that he's gonna do it like Steph said, some of us might be like Martha in John chapter 11 when she said to Jesus, now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But G Jesus answered and said to Martha uh, by gently reminding her, did I not say unto you? that if you believe you can see that the glory of god so we don't know what your situation may be looking like it may be looking dead and stinky by now but god said the saying the same thing to you did i not say to you if you would believe you can see the glory of god and that's what god wants us to do believe and have faith in him and not in the situation so some things may be looking dead in your uh, life right now but by the glory of god he can raise and resurrect those particular things but it can't be done if you don't have faith you got to have the faith in the right one that can resurrect whatever situation that may be stinking and dead by now. Like Steph said, it's been so long, you done given up on it like they had given up on Lazarus. But when God comes around, he can resurrect anything that has been dead. And that's it. If we can, again, speak life to it and make sure that we're using our words and speaking life, we can always speak life to our situations and circumstances too. But it's going to require us having faith in the right one and in the right source and walking by what uh, and, and and God strengthening God's word and exercising God's word rather than what, what we can visibly see. Because we might not always see what we think we need to see. But if we can exercise God's word, it can resurrect anything that may seem dead. So there's power in life and, and how we speak in, in, in our tongue. So make sure we're using uh, our tongue to uh, preserve life rather than to kill life. 
Yeah, so today we're asking you, uh, uh, will you have all faith and no fear? Is this your season to believe? And God said, if you can just by faith believe in him and what he has told you and what he has promised you and not give up and not quit, you will see uh, his promise come to pass. He will deliver for you, but you got to continue to keep going even when you don't want to keep going, even when you don't see. He just said, by faith, if you can re actually remember today, anything else, by faith, I will get what God has promised me by faith. If I just keep my focus on God and follow through with what he's telling me and hold on to his word. Yeah, and wherever you may be on today, like we said, by faith, you're going to get, you're going to make it, you're going to get through. And by faith, that means letting God's word be the final say so. God's word get the final say so. And whatever your situation may be, God has the final say so. And faith is seeing uh, things God's way and, 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 and using God's word and uh, God's will for us. So no matter where you may be at, by faith, you're going to get through whatever it is that you're going through. And just remember in uh, Hebrews chapter 11, that's our hall, a hall of faith of people that did everything by faith. Go and read that particular chapter if you get a chance. And that's the hall of faith. And we want our name to be within that hall of faith. Whatever situation you may be in, may your name be uh, represented in that chapter by faith. Daphne uh, did this through God, and by faith, Stephanie did this through uh, uh, God. By faith, Elder did this through God. By faith, El Miss K did this by God, and only through faith that we can do whatever needs to be done in our life. And that, mm -hmm. and and like they say, it's impossible to please God without faith. So if you want to please God what you got to do you got to be willing to exercise faith and when we can exercise faith guess what there's nothing that god won't uh, be able to do for us and he'll make everything possible for us and that's what he wants to do make things possible for us but he can't do that if we don't have the faith in the right place and that's in him and, and when we can put our faith in him he can do all things. So no matter what sickness you may be facing, whatever uh, the child may not be doing what you think it needs to be doing, whatever your challenge may be on today, just believe by faith you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you on today. Yeah, and faith come by what now? Hearing and hearing the word of God. DC, how? Through Jesus, of course. Bye. <laughs>